Hello children! Today we're out here in this beautiful tropical hardwood hammock habitat, a species of habitat that I've never been in before, out here in the search for invertebrates like centipedes and arachnids. But we're not out here alone and... Hey everyone, I'm Emilio Pasmino from Animal Encounters and today, apart from invertebrates, we're also going to be looking for lizards. Yes, we had no clue that this habitat was going to be so good for lizards since we were here for invertebrates, but... We'll see if we could find any cool lizards. There's a ton of crested anoles around. It looks like some great habitat for maybe some rarer species. So let's see what all we could find. All right, children, I'm going for this crested anole right here. Nice. All right, children, so this right here is a crested anole. Now these are one of the most common anole species in Miami-Dade County. You can see one of the best ways to identify the males is that dewlap. Look at that beautiful dewlap right there. The dewlap being mostly bright yellow with an orange rim is extremely distinctive of the crested anole, but since this trait is only found on males, it is not always of best use to tell this apart from the more common invasive brown anole. Crested anoles grow much larger in size, and have a complete pale ring around the eye. In the brown anole, the eye ring would be interrupted, with a dark dash that runs behind and above the eye. Ow. <laughs> Do you have anything to say about crested anoles? Yeah, I mean, these guys are yet another of the invasive anole species we have over here in South Florida. Like, we only have, really have one native species, the Carolina green, mm -hmm. but we have multiple invasive species from mostly from the Caribbean, like the brown anole, the crested anole, and then the, uh, the bark anole, among many others. Mm -hmm. This was a great start, of course, but after a lot of walking, a lot more crested anoles. One crested anole eating its own tail shed, don't ask, and a lot of unsuccessful log and rock flips. Our chances of finding literally any other lizard were looking smaller and smaller, until... Tell the camera what that is. This right here is a reef gecko. Now this little tiny unassuming plain brown lizard is an extremely cool lizard because it is a lifer for both of us. And it is a lizard that I have been trying to find for years and have you have you tried looking for this before? I have never seen one of these and I frankly had no idea they were even going to be here. It caught me yeah. off guard completely when I flipped this log. This is not a very good spot to be filming stuff so let's head over to the trail and see if we could get some better looks at this reef gecko. All right, so we brought it out here to the trail and because it's a very dark colored species, it contrasts really nicely on this white background. So you can take a better look at it than when it was in my hand. So what makes the reef gecko such an interesting species, not only because it's a lifer for both of us, but also because it is the only native species of gecko in all of Florida. Now notice the fact that he said native. Because while it is, it is the only native species, it's not the only gecko found in Florida these days. Because there's tons of invasive species of geckos. There's the, the morning gecko, there's the Mediterranean house gecko, there's even the massive toke gecko, which, you know, when you compare that animal that can grow up to 12 inches to this tiny little native reef gecko, you think, oh, it stands no chance. They're gonna outcompete it easily. There is some good news with this species, and it's the fact that they occupy different niches in the ecosystem. Like the geckos are gonna be up in walls, near lights, or in trees, while these guys are gonna be down in the ground, in the lift litter, under rocks and logs. So fortunately, they're not gonna be in the same area, so they won't be eating each other. If you could see how tiny this reef gecko right here is, about two inches long from head to tail, that is an adult reef gecko. Now the juveniles are a lot smaller and have much more striking patterning with some yellow and some darker and lighter pale striping as well as two very distinctive white spots on the back of the neck. However, all that patterning is basically gone in the full grown adults, which are basically just mottled dark brown with black spots. While you can't really see the patterning this well in this silhouette view against the white tray, you could really see the body shape well and see exactly why this is a kind of gecko. Although. One thing that sets this apart from many other geckos that you might be familiar with is that it doesn't have those really big toe pads at the end of each toe. This is because reef geckos don't really need to climb nearly as much as any other geckos, as they spend so much of their time underneath the ground, in the leaf litter, and underneath the rocks and logs. 
This was really showing in the fact that it was really struggling to try and walk out of the container we had it in. In hand though, you can see the subtle modeling on its body. Mostly dark brown, but there's some darker brown spots and stripes on it as well, with a little bit of paler brown spotting mixed in. This camouflage is almost perfect for blending in and the decomposing organic matter underneath the rocks and logs, and made it almost impossible to spot this individual if it didn't just move slightly. These guys are a member of the family Spherodactylidae, or colloquially known as Spheros, a family of smaller sized geckos, mostly concentrated in the tropics, with this genus Spherodactylus being found almost exclusively in the Neotropics. As expected, there are a few invasive species of Spherodactylids found in Florida, most of which have much more spectacular colorations than this reef gecko. However, Spherodactylidae all have this kind of small compact shape with a very slender pointy face that is a pretty distinctive look. Now even though the invasives and other species found in the Neotropics are brighter colored, this gecko is still extremely special and this was an amazing moment for both of us. Alright, let's release it. Alright, we're going to release the reef gecko exactly under the same log we found it. Bueno muchachos, hasta la próxima. Alright, so real gently, let him go back into the leaf litter. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where I find the giant invasive toke geckos of South Florida, plus much more wildlife. I'm going. What are you talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs>